house at any time of the day, any, during any month when he has to either go on tour or whatever. At two o'clock in the afternoon, on a, you know, on a, on a, a November day, there'd be a knock on the door, and I look out, and in my driveway is this car, this old Chevy with flames on it. I said to my husband, "God darn, it's that Springsteen kid again." I mean, what are the neighbors going to think? They have this, big, you know, this hot rod in the, and there's Bruce, always looking like he's he's cold and he needs something. Hi, Lord, Lourdes. I got you the money. I'm going on, uh, I got a tour, I'm gonna to be somewhere uh, when the rent's due, and I didn't. I forgot to tell Laurel Canyon to, uh, you know, to, to uh, send you a check. Okay, fine, what month is this for, Bruce? Well, I'm not sure, when, when did I pay the rent last? I said, well, the rent you paid last, I thought, was for this month. No, I don't think so, he said, because I couldn't have given you that money and still had this money left over. <laughs> So I would say, okay, well, that's cool. So that was the kind of tenant Bruce was. He was always on time, before time, beyond time, but I always had the rent. And if he really was going off for a while, Laurel Canyon would send me a check for the $200. So it was a good relationship. We, we never had a problem um, with his rent situation. Um, how are we doing with that thing? Uh oh, we have something here. It's warming, oh, we got, uh, it's warming up. Warming up, okay. No, no it's warming up. See, all right. Here's the issue. We're fine. It always in rehearsal, everything's great, there, right? There it yeah, is. There we go. All right. This is one of the notes he left in my mailbox with two hundred dollars in twenty dollar bills on it. This is what he would do. So, the, I mean, this this is typical of what I would have when Bruce was when I was not home. He would drop the money in the mailbox, and I would say, Bruce, don't do that. I mean, you know, the mailman. I don't know if the mailman is going to. And there's two hundred dollars in cash, but that that was one of the notes that I thought was kind of cute. Um, and anyway, uh, in, in effect, Bruce was a great tenant with the house. He never complained about anything. He loved living in West End. He really got to know all the neighbors. Everybody left him alone. It was a great place to be for him at that time because this is when he was sort of on the cusp of becoming who he is today. And uh, so it was it was kind of fun. So we had this. You know, he was in the house, it was a good time for him. West End was moving on, and so was Bruce, and this is how I got my rent. Okay, so. Wait, oh, I'm sorry, were you gonna What do you think, I mean, go to the next one on this? Oh, you wanna do that? Yeah. yeah. Which number go to two? the next document. No, number two is not it. You mean, you want the letter? Number three? Four? No, we're just, we're skipping around. Oh, oh, oh I'm She's sorry. She's got okay. a few pieces of paper. Oh, this is I, not I, the I only one. Okay, I'm let's not do, taking it in your <laughs> order. Okay, let's do number two. Help me out here. Okay, let's do the perks. Number okay, two. fine. Yeah, we're two. already talking about the perks. The perks. Okay, so I take Bruce up on his offer. I go into my office one day and I find this note written by the uh, secretary. Bruce Springsteen wants you to come to New York Sunday, 17th. Tickets for you at the bottom line. Oh. And we all know what the 75 bottom line shows were in Bruce's career, do oh. I mean, this was, I used to call Bruce up myself or call his uh, office the, at Laurel Canyon and say, Bruce is going to be in Boston, Bruce is going to be at Avery Fisher, Bruce, can I get four tickets? Oh, no problem. No, you just pick them up at the box office, they'll be there. Backstage passes, whatever you want, no problem. And then, of course, as I said, I didn't even want to go to the bottom line. I didn't even know about it, but I get this, I get this note. I mean, you want to, Bruce fans, I mean, isn't that kind of like a, you know, a fantasy that you, Bruce Springsteen sent to your phone? Okay, anyway. Um, I, I kind of figured out after a while it was kind of a good place to be. All right, now I went to several, I think the, fun, the funnest concert I ever went to was at Avery Fisher Hall. It was one of the first times that Bruce actually, we got, we got tickets from Bruce, and they, they put us up in the uh, mezzanine, the front mezzanine for the concert. Now, I was with my ex-husband, my brother, and his girlfriend. We're sitting up there, and in the, <laughs> it was like, all of Max Weinberg's family, from cousins, uncles, aunts, parents, brothers, sisters, girlfriends, I don't know, all were up there because this was his first time appearing with the band uh, as a, an East Street band. So we're up there. I mean, have you ever been with a, a nice Jewish family from North Jersey when their, you know, their rising son is on the stage at Amy Fisher Hall? <laughs> we were shh. I mean, they were, oh my God, it was unbelievable. They were the riotous, I mean, craziest people I've ever met. Funny, I don't mean to disparage them, 
It was just very funny. So and then there was another time we got tickets to go up to Boston to see Bruce. Now my ex-husband was up there already on business. I go to Newark to get on the shuttle between Newark and uh, Boston. And who gets on the plane but the entire East Street band, Bruce and his girlfriend Karen, Howie Grant, whose father owned the movie theater in West End, how he had never flown before. He's already throwing up when we were before the plane he was around, <laughs> screaming and yelling. And don't you know it, I get the seat next to Bruce. <laughs> but Karen has to sit behind him. And the whole time as we're, you know, going to Bruce is sort of like this and holding hands and I'm sort of chatting it up and he's all he's not happy and Howie is saying, I can't stand it, I'm gonna die. <laughs> this is, and I finally said to Bruce, if, if you do me a favor, I'll switch seats with Karen. Oh, I said, uh, can I get all the barf bags from and all the, in front of us? And, and if you autograph them all, I will get up and I will give you Karen. So five barf bags later and five <laughs> autographs, I changed seats somewhere. I gave them out. I, don't, I know I have a cousin who has one. I don't know whatever happened to the rest of them. But that was my deal with Bruce. That's got to be a unique collector's item. Bruce signed Bart Bart Bats. That's right. So oh. they are um, yeah, you know, Anyway, you know, going, we went to, and then there we go, oh, the bottom line. This was an interesting story. We go to the bottom line. I'd never been there before. I wasn't that deprived. I mean, I had an interesting life, but it was mostly in Washington, D.C., so the bottom line was a new experience. Um, very intimate, an opportunity to see Bruce more, you know, there as opposed to way over there, no, you know, screens or anything. So we I come in, and he's doing this riff, he goes on and he's, he and Clarence used to do this thing, you know, they have dueling guitars and they kind of be fighting with each other and so on. So in the midst of it all, I remembered somebody said that they had yelled out the address of the house in one of the previous concerts, seven and a half, and that it got Bruce's attention. So the bottom line is a small, intimate club, so I stand up and I yell, seven and a half. Bruce stops the music. Everybody stops on stage. Bruce looks out. Is that my landlord is? <laughs> yeah, where are you? Stand up. That's my landlady, he said. That's my landlady. So everybody's uh, clapping and screaming, and he says, uh, that's my landlady. She ain't afraid of no Clarence Clemens. <laughs> <laughs> and, and anybody who finds the bootleg where he says that? I have it, I have it. Oh, well, okay. She I don't, don't have, have it. She don't like listen. to have it. She don't listen to Clarence die? Clemens. <laughs> she ain't afraid of him. At, as I said, at the time, you know, everybody's going crazy and this is going on. Somebody was taping that show. That's 1975. In 1990, I get a call from my brother who lives up in Boston. You'll never guess, he said, I bought some bootleg tapes at the bottom line in 75, and I'm listening to it, what do I hear? Seven and a half! Oh, is that my landlord? Is, oh, God, he said, you're right on the tape. So I have a copy of it. That's great. So, uh, You'll have to give it to me sometime. You think so? I'll be happy to make a copy. Right. <laughs> what do you think, shall we move on? Anyway, yeah. those are my perks. I never paid for a ticket in all those years. I went to all those concerts, went to Red Bank, if I count Basie. Went to Washington, D.C., never paid for a ticket. He was really great. He was a man of his word. So, okay, go ahead. So, what do you think? Are you ready for the next letter? All right. Which one is that? Number, um, number three. Number four? Or number, number three. Oh, We're okay. going in order here. Oh, God. I no, it's not so loud. All right. Not to go. I call this um, the end because Bruce.